see all of you here in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to be here with you, especially on this Easter morning. I hope you know this old call and response, but he has risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. That's right. That's why we are here to celebrate. That's what we are here to celebrate this morning in particular. The fact that Jesus Christ, after being dead, came back to life three days later. And uh, we're going to get to the kids program in just a minute. They're going to act out that story for you. And then uh, we'll have a, a brief message because you can't stop a preacher from preaching, especially not on Easter. So uh, the brief message, and uh, then we'll go about our day. But I want to thank you for being here. Uh, all of our guests, uh, if you don't mind, throw out that little card in front of you and put it in the offering plate so we have a record of your visit. And we'll have the offering here in just a moment. Uh, real quick, if you would, join me in your bulletins. I uh, got yeah, just a couple of things to highlight. Um, I want to say thank you and join the board and say thank you to everyone who helped prepare breakfast for us this morning. Our sunrise service was a little damp, so we moved it inside. But uh, besides that, it was a great time. We had a good time together and a great meal. Thank you to everyone who uh, put that together. And I want to say that you all have opportunities to help feed children. And I think as Southerners, that's something we all love to do. We feed people, especially little kids, right? So there are two ways which we can help feed kids. One, we can help Camp Kale raise money for their new cafeteria. And you see that there in the third <coughs> announcement about the uh, pig on the equipment. That'll be April 29th. The ladies are making up a basket for their auction. The men are entering into the pig cooking contest. So uh, join us there. Uh, all the money goes to Camp Kale's cafeteria uh, and it's going to be a great benefit. And then the second is the one right below it, the Baptist Children's Homes. We're doing the food roundup for them, and that will take uh, Food Lion or Sam's Club's gift cards or food donations, uh, dry food donations to them, and that goes to the Baptist Children's Homes across the state. And they, of course, take in kids who need safe places to live, and they feed them, help take care of them, share the gospel with them, and hopefully help them find eternal homes, forever homes. All right? And you see there on April 30th, we're going to have a special uh, worship time at OBX Bluegrass. That'll be 3 o'clock, Sunday the 30th, fifth Sunday of this month. Right. Anything else that needs to be announced will come before the church? All right. Well, then let's um, go straight to our prayer time. Sorry, we shift the things around a little bit and make room for the play so that it's not my habit. Uh, do we have any? I think the park will be done this week, supposedly. Yes. Um, like the off right. Don't drive through the parking lot. We need to tell everybody in weeks, well, don't just come driving through the parking lot to get the crosswinds. Uh, was that Monday and Tuesday? Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, hopefully, weather's still permitting and the, the guy can get to it, they'll be um, patching the cracks and repainting the lines in the parking lot like we uh, voted on last year. Okay. Thank you, Ken. All right, in terms of prayer requests, uh, they didn't make it back, but Rick and Linda were here this morning, and I got to talk to Linda some. Betty Jo has come back home from the nursing home, uh, and she's doing better than she has in the last couple of years, according to Linda Jo. So that's a great praise. Uh, it doesn't mean, as far as we know, that her liver is cured. Uh, we know the Lord can, but as far as we know, he hasn't. But she is doing better, and we just still pray that she continues to rehab at home and continues to improve and uh, just be a blessing to her family that way. Right. What other prayer requests or praises? Um, our newest member, Tammy, is going to be going to John Hopkins tomorrow for some uh, testing, I believe it is, and I think that we could all remember her mm -hmm. and her, uh, whatever them doctors are, yeah. Yeah. Medical personnel is what I was supposed to say. Oh, those doctor people. It's, yeah. God knows who they are. Uh, but yeah, Tammy's going to John Hopkins uh, tomorrow. She'll be gone for a few days. So remember her travels and the tests that they would find what needs to be found and have uh, okay. a good plan of action because of it. Who else? I have a praise. Yeah. Um, my mom, I took her back to the eye doctor this week and she got a little bit better report this time. 
Good. So please keep praying. Good. Yes, let me keep Miss Betty Ben and Miss Betty Joe. So both Bettys in prayer. But uh, that's good news. I mean, she hasn't had a lot of improvements lately, so that's good. Any little news is good news. Who else? All right, let's go to Lord in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this day you have given us, this day to celebrate that you came back to life from the dead, Lord Jesus. Uh, you couldn't be our Lord if you stayed dead, because you would just be in a tomb, like everybody else. But Lord, you said that you would be killed by sinful men. The prophet said you would die, and they both, they and you, said you would come back to life. And so you kept that promise, and you displayed your power and your victory over death and hell and the grave, and we are so in awe and so grateful to you. And so we praise you, Lord Jesus. I want to say thank you. I want to ask you to please be with these that we've mentioned, both Betty Jo and Betty Benton and Tammy, and the unspoken request, the ongoing medical need request. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with our kids as they come out. Help them to uh, remember their places and where they need to be and when, and um, just help everybody behind the scenes. And I pray, Lord, that this would glorify you and help us to remember your story, the gospel story, that you died for us and you came back to life for us. And Lord, you are now seated at the right hand of God, and one day everything will be put under your feet, and you will be Lord over all of creation, as you should be. And we who follow you will rejoice with you and be in that creation forever in your company. We praise you, we look forward to that. And Lord, while we wait, help us to spread your good news to others so they also will be ready. We thank you for all your many blessings and we pray that you continue to pour them out on us because we need you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, we're moving to our offertory hymn now. So ushers, this is the offertory hymn. Well, usually it's the second, but we're going straight there tonight. Uh, hymn number 277, Take My Life and Let It Be. Hymn number 277, let's sing the first, second, and last.
they used to play. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the cosmos and the world and all life. Everything on earth was good, including human beings who God made in his image and gave stewardship over the world. When the first people rebelled against God's rule, they brought sin and death into the world and all humanity, plus the nature they ruled over fell. Sin created a great divide between the people and their creator. This saddened the Lord, so he put into motion a plan where he would restore people to a right relationship with himself. Many prophets revealed aspects of that plan and gave details that would confirm who the Savior was when he arrived. At the time, at the right time, in fulfillment of many prophecies, God's Son became a man and lived among us. This man was named Jesus, and he lived completely obedient to God the Father. He taught God's ways, performed many miracles, reached out to hurting people, and trained disciples to spread his teachings and tell others about the way of salvation that he would show them. He taught and ministered for about three years when, a week before the Jewish festival of Passover, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to ride on. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Now if you would take your hymn books and join in singing hymn, Lift Up Your Heads, number 128. We'll sing all three verses of hymn 128.
Jesus taught in Jerusalem for a week, many of the Jewish leaders felt jealous and threatened by his popularity and his teachings. They began plotting Jesus' death. On Passover night, Jesus ate the sacred meal with his disciples and told them many difficult things about how one of them would betray him and his coming arrest and execution. He washed their feet to demonstrate that all of his followers should also be servants, and he encouraged them by explaining that he would return to life and prepare an eternal home for all of his followers. After the meal, Jesus instituted what we celebrate today as the Lord's Supper. Matthew 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine and from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And now we will sing hymn number 374, Your Supper, Lord. Hymn 374, all four verses. was a garden that Jesus enjoyed visiting.
Luke 22, 39 to 53 says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and a man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, but you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. He allowed the mob to take him. The priest put him through a mockery of a trial, 
had him beaten and ridiculed, and they roused up a mob to pressure their Roman governor, Pilate, to have him crucified. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others? Let him save himself, if he's God's Messiah. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining. The curtain in the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now if you would join me in singing hymn 141, the old rugged cross, number 141, the first, third, and fourth verses.
Jesus died before sundown, and they buried him quickly in a tomb donated by Joseph of Arimathea before Sabbath. The Jewish leaders got Roman guards from Pilate to secure the tomb and make sure the disciples did not steal the body. Early Sunday morning, women who loved and followed Jesus went to the tomb to anoint his body. The Bible tells us that on the first Easter morning, two angels of the Lord appeared at the tomb and rolled back the stone. Their appearance terrified the guards. Matthew 28, 1. There was a violent earthquake, for angels of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Their appearance was like lightning and clothes white as snow. The guards were so afraid of them that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. If you were the same, Christ the Lord is risen today, hymn number 159. 1st and last verse, 159. Jesus spent 40 days after his resurrection with his followers. The Bible tells us that at one time about 500 people saw him alive during those 40 days. 
On his final day with them, Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two angels, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you see him go into heaven. And since then, all of Jesus' Jesus's followers have been hopefully awaiting his return and working to advance his kingdom here on earth while we wait. Children have a song they want to sing for you. Give us just a moment.
Our men behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Melissa and everybody else who was involved, all the parents who stayed and held, uh, volunteers back there who wrangled the kids and got them lined up, our set piece movers and our men behind the curtain, everybody who was involved, thank you uh, for having the kids to, uh, to do that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to preach for just a minute, and then I know you're ready for some Easter lunch, some of you have family plans, but if you would for a second, join me in Revelation chapter 1. I can't hold two things at one time, and I'm just going to uh, drop everything, so I'll try to speak loudly enough without the microphone. Many of you are probably thinking, what are you doing in Revelation, preacher? It's Easter. It should be one of the Gospels, right? Well, they showed you that. And they showed you that very well, I think. And we read some from the Gospels in the play. And here in Revelation 1, the Apostle John, who was an eyewitness of the events you just saw in the kids debate, sees Jesus about 60 years later in a very different way. He sees him in a vision while he's banished for his testimony about the Lord. John says in Revelation 1.12, Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. When I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was one like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. The hair of his head was white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a fiery flame. His feet were like fine bronze as it is fired in the furnace, and his voice like the sound of cascading waters. He had seven stars in his right hand. A double-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was shining like the sun at full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead, but look. I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Now, Hades, if you're not familiar with Greek mythology, was the realm of the dead. Uh, some translations render that death and hell. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the place of punishment. We think of hell. It is the realm where all the dead would go before they were judged. And I want us to look at this picture of Jesus. Because we think so often of him as the baby in a manger at Christmas or the man on the cross at Good Friday and risen on Easter. And that is appropriate. That is great. But this is, as Paul Harvey would say, the end of the story. Where Jesus is appearing to John. He's showing them how the story is going to end. And he is glorified. He is wondrous in appearance. Bright like the sun. His feet like heated up bronze metal. This sword, his, his word coming from his mouth is sharp and powerful like a sword. This is the Christ who will reign forever and ever. And he says to John, I am the living one. I have life in myself and of myself. I was dead. You saw it, John. You remember that, right? You can never forget it. But I'm alive. You saw me come back to life, but I'm still alive. I'm still in glory. I'm in God's presence at his right hand. John, I conquered death that day when I came back to life. I had the keys. And having the keys to something is a sign of great authority and great power. John uses it several times in Revelation. 
but it means basically like we have keys. I can let people into church because I have the key to it. I can let people into my house because I have the key to it. Jesus can let people into death, but he can also let them out of death. He has the key to the gates. He has opened it wide for anybody who believes in him to come back out of death when he calls them. Just like when he called Lazarus and that man stood up. His sister said, Lord, he's been dead four days. Don't open the stone. Don't roll it away. He stinketh. My favorite verse is in King James, by the way. He stinketh. He was running. He was four days dead. Jesus said, roll that stone. Lazarus, get out of there. And the man obeyed, even though he was dead. And one day, he's going to call every believer, I think by name, somehow simultaneously. But he's going to say, get up out of that grave. Come back together out of that urn. And come up here with me. And we're going to join him forever and ever. He is the victor over death and over sin itself and all the powers of hell and evil. He is the risen and living one. And so as we conclude, I want to give you a chance. If you have not made him your Lord, if you have not decided to follow him, you should do that today because you don't know when your life is going to be over. None of us do. We don't know when we might have that aneurysm. We might get hit by that car. We might have some horrific gun violence incidents like they do at schools across our nation more frequently. Life has always been short and unpredictable. So if you don't know for sure that Jesus will call you home and has a place prepared for you because you never made a place for him in your heart, change that today and make him your Lord and Savior. While everyone sings, it's hymn number 173, Christ is Alive. If you need to make that decision or you just want to come and pray for yourself or someone else, we don't have a table but this stage is just fine to come and kneel out to. Come and pray. If you want to be saved, come and talk to me. I'll show you from the scripture how you can be one of Christ's followers. And make sure you have your place on the victor's side at the end of the story. Please stand and sing in number 173.
And people will wonder, what in the world is weird with them? And that's a good thing, because that gives you a chance to say, Jesus made me different. Jesus makes me glad. Jesus makes me peaceful and hopeful. Let me tell you about it. That's how we can share the good news. Well, the kids are going to give us a benediction. I'll be at the front door. Uh, don't hurry up and leave. Or the kids are back here. Let them uh, say the things back on the paper. Oh, yes, men, we need some help, some good backs, some new furniture back, and uh, set pieces off, that sort of thing. Okay? So don't run away. Love on the kids. Don't have a good they did. Uh, if you got a good bag, help us move some furniture. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for you being accepting the cross, being on the cross and dying for our sins. And Lord, you've taken our sins away by that act. And Lord, we need you. those that have not accepted you, may they come and accept you. And those of us that have, Lord, may we praise you forever and bring others to you and to your fold. As we go out and do this from this church and into the community, let us praise your name forever. These things we ask you in the Son's name, Jesus. Amen.